<laughs> Thank you for all the for lifers joining us today. A uh, quick shout out to those who are already in here. So let's see, we got Frankie Lawless, Ridiculous Badger, uh, McLuhan to G, the Titan, Primax, all you guys, regulars. Uh, I think all of you guys are, um, except maybe McLuhan to G, are in the Discord as well. So thank you for your support. We're here doing Mainline Monday. Like I said, we tried to do that starting last week, uh, but we're starting that now. Give me a second here. And uh, just a reminder, we are, hey Petrosum, uh, we are doing a live Q&A, so if you're in the live chat, go ahead and drop your questions there, that way I can get them all gathered up and answer them during the breaks. And then, um, also I put up a poll to ask if you guys think that this is the uh, best triple changer from the mainline Hasbro that we've gotten to date, yes or no, so fill out that poll if you're here as well. All right, so this is Transformers Legacy Blitzwing. I've been getting a lot more uh, mainline stuff just because... Um, I picked up a couple offhand, and they've just been so good that I've wanted to pick some others up. And this in particular, I asked T-Man and T TM uh, who they thought were some of the best of the, the main line, and they said Blitzwing, and I just happened to go hunting and find them that same day or the next day. So the box itself looks really nice, has that weird shape that they're doing nowadays, uh, no window or anything like that, but the artwork is fantastic. This kind of graffiti-style artwork looks really good. You can see them in both, uh, well, all three of his modes here. Um, uh, on the side, you see his alt modes. This side, you see some um, artwork for some of the other characters in the line. Kickback, Megatron, who I don't think we've seen yet in Legacy, uh, Drag Strip, and so forth. On the back, you see all the different things you get. Um, 32 steps to get into one mode and 41 steps to get into another. You get some of these weird accessories, which we'll talk about in a second. Uh, but that's really it. Very nice box. This does retail in the U.S. for... $55 now, so $55 is quite a lot to ask uh, for a main line, but this is a leader class technically. Um, so if you guys don't know, the classes no longer seem to really be about size, more about um, overall uh, complexity, weight, plastic, um, accessories, and so forth. So this guy is a leader class, but you'll see when we get into the robot mode that he is more of a Voyager class in terms of size, um, even a small Voyager at that his instructions are actually quite nicely detailed. They did a very good job of that, showing you exactly how things done, um, how to do the playability with some of the extra accessories, which we'll go to in a minute. Uh, hey, Lois, how's it going? Hey, Xenomorph. Hey, Anthony Brown, True Star Screamer. Uh, yeah, that's what I said, True Star Screamer. He said should not have been a leader, quote-unquote, leader class. Hey, Princeton. Hey, Winston. So, yeah, here he comes in uh, tank mode out of the box. So, as usual, we'll go from tank mode, uh, the out of the box mode into the various other modes. And then back, we do, do um, transformations both directions for everyone who's watching. But he looks really, really pretty good in tank mode. He still has that weird kind of protrusion. I think this sticks out a little too much. Um, and there are some gaps here. It would have been nice if we got a little bit of filler in these sections. But for mainline figure, He's very nice, and he feels quite hefty for a mainline figure. Uh, he does come with a couple of accessories, so these blaster slash hands things, we'll get into that in a minute. They come packaged like this. Nice translucent red with painted purple. He does come with his iconic blade, kind of weirdly serrated. He has two blasters, which I believe are identically molded. And you can use these in alt mode however you'd like. You can see that there's various ports on the side here. One, two, three. Um, you can put them back here or over here. Um, I wish the peg on the guns were a little bit longer so that you can put it directly here. But you can turn it to the side and use it there. I think that looks a little bit weird. Um, but yeah, you can do that. The sword itself also has a peg on the hilt which allows you to peg it into the top of here, or again, you can plug it, plug it in there. And then you have these two uh, sets of hands, which are not exactly um, the same. So you gotta make sure, as you can see, one side here has kind of a tab hole slot here. So you wanna have that position on this side, and you'll see there's tabs on either side of the turret, and then a little slot here, which houses the, the front. Where is it? Oh, sorry. I forgot, for this mode, you have to actually take this off, and then you have this plug here that goes in here. Um, this is actually kind of hard to get out, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but once you have that out, this one goes on this side, sorry, with that red 
tab going in there. Same thing on this side. Tab this in. I'm going to try not to tab it in too deeply because it's they're really hard to get out. And then again, this slot. So they, they are mirrored. So make sure you have that correctly done. And this is like the best use of the accessories. Uh, these two accessories at least. The rest are the rest look really good, but these look kind of odd in, in the other modes that we'll get to in the jet mode and so forth. Obviously, there's more ports here and there, so you can end up adding these up on top if you'd like. There's a lot of playability here. But yeah. Let's get these off and then we'll talk about the alt mode by itself before we get into anything else. The alt mode does have a four sets of wheels that allow you to roll it back and forth. Non-working treads, as you would probably expect. His turret does rotate around. Um, it is actually on a double hinge, mostly meant for transformation, but if you want to use that for articulation, you can to get it up and down. You can even scoot it back. You know how some tanks have the turret scooched back a bit more, however you'd like. Um, the the uh, barrel itself can move up. It has It's like ratcheted. It goes one up, and then you can go a second one up, but then it actually ends up opening up this slot here which is for transformation. So it would have been nice if you got a second one in between these or if it was just friction. I didn't think it really was necessary for it to be um, ratcheted or in detented. Oh, somebody was talking about weirdly serrated. What's that? <laughs> All right, I gotta, I gotta, I not get distracted. So let's get through the rest of it. The rest of it looks really quite nice. Um, there's nothing else uh, to really talk about playability-wise. The one thing I will say, optionally, you can see Blitzwing's head through here because there is some gappage. Um, when I transform it, I usually um, flip that around so you can put this like so and flip this around, and that way you at least have some yellow panel. But since that's not how it was out of box, I wanted to keep it like that, but give you the option of doing that. But yeah, that's really it. Uh, comparison, again, I don't have a lot of mainline stuff, so we'll just compare him to old reliable MP Streak. Obviously, this is not to scale, and typically the triple changers aren't really to scale anyways because, you know, tanks and jets are all different scale. So, but they still look good together. And like I said, he feels very hefty. Uh, let's, let's weigh this guy. I usually don't way like mainline stuff usually mostly third party stuff for the most part but just because he is hefty and want to let you know that you are getting a little bit of bang for your buck for a leader class he is 130 so that's quite hefty for a mainline figure all right so yeah that's really it for oh so oh yeah uh shout out to tm reviews a uh, good friend of mine he just crossed 10,000 subs today or sometime this week. So very big congrats to him. Uh, I'll never catch up to him with the amount of output and all the good content that he does. So congrats, T TM. All right, so um, that's really it for alt mode. There's not really much else to talk about. It does look quite good. There are some gappage down here. But again, for a triple changer, um, I think he does a really good job, especially from the main line. All right, so I'm going to go a different direction in terms of transformation than the instructions go. The instructions basically show you this to robot and to jet. I find that makes little sense because there's more in common with jet mode and tank mode. And we also want to kind of um, kind of finish off our one-way directions with robot mode. So we're going to go into jet mode first. So first thing we'll do is we want to lift the turret up. We'll flip this open, flip this in. Close this up. You want to rotate it 180. We'll go ahead and lift this tab up and then start releasing uh, here. So we'll come to the side. We're going to lift this, rotate this around like so. That tabs in. Same thing on this side. This tabs in. So these treads. And then the um, these treads fold up like so. They untab from this arm section. Same thing on this side. Untab. And then we basically want to get this entire section up. It's on a secondary set of double hinges here. And while we're here, we can collapse or tab in these, um, what are the kind of essentially the wings. So we want to rotate these around, and you'll see this tab here. You want to collapse it all the way in on itself, 180 degrees. You want to rotate this around 180, like so. When we come down here, we're going to deal with the legs first. 
Uh, actually, no, we don't. Uh, we just need to move some of this stuff out of the way. So we'll lift this. We want to split the legs. Lift these wings out. They form the, the calves. Want to lift these around. And you can see they form the majority of the wing. Like so. From here, we're going to untab at the shoulder here. Uh, I'll show it to, from the front because you can see better. This panel here, we're going to untab. Be careful. This is a little, not super thin, but it is kind of flexy. When you want to rotate that around, there's a tab here that corresponds. So make sure that the waist is um, straight when you do that. There we go. Get this down like so. Same thing on this side. We'll untab this section. Rotate that up and around. Get this tabbed in like so. All right, so you can already kind of see where everything's going here. You can flip these pieces down really at any point. We'll just do it now. And then this whole backpack will fold back down. There's two tabs back here that tab into place. Right there. And then there's another tab right there which will go into the arm. If I can get it lined up, there we go. Same thing on this side, like so. And then these two tabs, tab back there. We're gonna fold these up. These fins do not play a role in jet mode, as you might have thought. And then we're gonna deal with the nose cone. So we're gonna basically just open this up and then it's really hard to get to, so I suggest getting a, a trusty spudger, a Transformer fan's best friend. Oh, there's something to fly down here. It's annoying me. And just flip out that. Oh, and sorry, this turret should be rocked backwards on that double hinge. So it sits further back. The barrel should be facing forward. And then you can see that there's also... Here, there, there's that stupid fly again. You can see that there is um, a front landing gear. I don't believe there's a back landing gear. You might need to move the turret out of the way slightly, but you can get that out. But yeah, I don't think there's any like rear landing gear and these wheels don't play a role here. But this is how he looks in his other alt mode, his jet mode. And again, it looks really nice. Um, overall, obviously, he still has a lot of the chunk that you would expect. Um, I think we have all blitz wings have like a jet with a whole bunch of crud tank stuff on the bottom. That's just how it is. It's accurate to like the, the animation, but it still looks quite good. The guns, again, can play a nice role by plugging in here or even back here, which is, I think, a, kind of a new set of holes that are available back here. I would have thought they would have pegged into the wings like most kind of seekers. And then this blade here can really go wherever you want. I just plug it in here. You can probably also kind of tuck it away on one side here like this to make it a little bit more flush so it doesn't like stand out as much. So you can actually rest it down like so. And then we got these things. These things are just so dumb. Uh, so in this mode, oh, you take this out, you plug it back into the orientation it was before which was just to peg these onto the back. And then, uh, I forget how you do these. You just basically just plug them straight into the back and I'm trying to remember. Actually, I haven't done this in a while, so I'm trying to remember how this works. Was it this way? Oh, let me look at the instruction. Uh, let me look at the box real quick. I know they plug straight into the back, but I just don't remember how they connect. Where is it? Yeah, see? Yeah, so I knew it. Oh, it's this way. That's why I was doing it wrong. You have to get them like this, and then they tab in here. Am I doing something wrong? Hmm. You can see I don't practice this mode because it makes no sense to me. They end up being thrusters, but... I thought it just plugged in right there. Oh, I forget. Do you have to open these? I think you might you might have to open these. Oh, yeah, I think that was it. Yeah, you plug these into this. That's what it was. 
totally forgot about that. So you open kind of things in the back, and then these become weird thruster pieces. I don't recommend this. This obviously is just like a tacked on accessory usage here. Like, what is this supposed to be? Like super thrusters? But yeah, pretty, pretty worthless. And then we'll fold these back up. Uh, just remember that you need to fold these kind of out of the way, these silver pieces, um, because they do have tabs here, which are kind of hard to see because they're purple and they blend into the foot. So don't just try to close these with these silver pieces in the way. But yeah, his jet mode is definitely the weakest of all the, the three modes, but it's not terrible, honestly. I, I always say triple changers always have one mode that suffers the most. I guess this is the worst one, um, but it's definitely not, um, it's definitely not terrible overall. All right, so now we're gonna get from here into robot mode. And then we'll we'll stop for some questions, see where we are at with the poll slightly, and then we'll go ahead and finish off the review. All right, so folding up the landing gear, getting rid of these accessories. And the transformation is really fun on this guy. I will say that um, I played with this guy a lot. It's, it's a pretty basic transformation once you get the hang of it, uh, but he's really fun to transform back and forth. So we're gonna basically undo what we did before. So untab this, untab these from the arms, kind of bring this up. And we'll deal with the legs first. We'll fold this down, fold this down. We'll get the arms out of the way first. So untab them and put them back in the orientation we had before, because these obviously are the arms. Since we're already dealing with the arms, we can just lift these up. This flap comes out of this space filler slot. Rotate this around 180. Rotate this around. And then before you fold it back up, you want to get the fist down. So just reach in here, pull that fist out. And this ends up being a gap filler for his arm. It is a little oversized, but I don't mind it. I think it's a, a good, still a good use of that um, flap. And it's better than just having a, an empty space for sure. There we go. Those are his arms. Uh, since we're up here, let's just deal with the rest of the upper body. We'll flip this panel down, flip this nose cone in. One second, open this up. There we go. Flip this in, close this up. And then you wanna rotate the piece so that the head back of the head comes out. It can only rotate one way because it only has clearance one way. And then these two tabs, at least on mine, don't fit that well. You can see they're just kind of stressed. Um, you can tab that in. Hopefully that holds into place. But even if it doesn't, this backpack, when it rocks all the way up to the top, this panel comes around and tabs into his um, chest area. The one downside of this is you actually have articulation here at the shoulder. Uh, an additional articulation at the shoulder here, but unfortunately because of this and how it comes around, uh, you completely lose that. I mean, you still have it on, as, as a secondary joint here, but it would have been nice if we can move these shoulder pauldrons too, but we can't. All right, with this, we'll have the, uh, fold the backpack down. We'll flip these fins to the side. You'll need that for robot mode and you're done with the upper body. I said we were gonna start with the legs and then we told, told you to not. So coming to the lower body, split the legs, you kind of combine and wars these out so it's on a double hinge come all the way down there's a tab here so make sure that tabs in coming to the leg we're going to get it back into the position we had before essentially for tank mode uh, there's a series of tabs here so there's one here one here and then one here the one thing i will say is if you're having trouble getting this to this gap to close is try pushing on this yellow part so it actually slides and frictions in there. Um, that's the problem I was having. But once you do that, you should be good. Flip out the toes the, and the heel. And remember, you have to get this out of the way because then you fold that forward and tab that in. Same thing with the other leg. Kind of accordion it out. Tab this in. Straighten out the leg. Start wrapping the foot around. I mean, the the 
wing around the foot. And again, mine needs a little bit of push here to get that locked in. That gets this, this uh, gap a little bit more closed. Mine doesn't close all the way. But remember, get this out of the way before you pull up the toe, pull up the heel, tab that in. And here we are with Blitzwing, Legacy Blitzwing in robot mode. And he looks really good in this mode. Um, I was super impressed with him. Uh, the transformation, again, very fun. Um, the articulation, which we're going to get to in a second, is very cool. The weapons look very nice with him. So obviously the sword can peg in here, can go onto his backpack. Um, any number of those slots that we had before. Same thing with the gun. Both guns, they're the same. So you can tab them into his fists. I wanna, again, I wish they were a little bit longer. Or you can tab them into the side of the arm. Uh, you can tab them into the shoulder, all whatever ports. You you get you get the idea. He has ports. You can even tab tab them into the leg if you want. Don't know why you would want to do that, but you can do that. But yeah, he looks really great for a Blitzwing. Really nice silver plastic uh, 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 paint on the legs. Um, mine does have some over paint here, but that's going to be one off. The only thing that really I have complaints about with this mode, aside from the height, which we'll look at in just a second, is that I can, if you look at the head sculpt, which looks really nice, the only downside is they put a seam, I guess with a mold, right on his visor, which is a bummer. I mean, it's, it's nice and glossy, and you when, when the light catches it, you can very easily see it. I don't know if you can see it on the low resolution that YouTube Live has, but it's a seam that goes right across his eye. Um, and that's a bummer. I noticed that right away. All right. Well, before we get into articulation, let's do some comparisons. Uh, I don't have a ton of mainline stuff, but again, that collection is growing. So here he is next to um, Siege Optimus, Voyager Optimus. And here he is next to Voyager Leo Prime, which I did the other week. And who else do I have? Um, oh, here we have uh, Legends Class. And oh, and a recent or an older deluxe, which I just found, which is funny because I just did Bingo Toys and I totally didn't remember that I had this figure. An old deluxe Windblade, which I bet you she's gonna fall down because her heels suck. But well, here you go. But you can see he's actually smaller than the uh, Optimus here. Uh, by a little bit. And I know that works with the scale. I would have just liked if um, he was a little bit taller. I think that is in scale with the Sunbow animation. So, But when I think leader class, I'm still used to it being kind of associated with the height. So it's kind of a bummer that he's a little bit smaller. But again, he does feel much heftier than these, both of these guys uh, at, at, the Voy at the Voyager scale. All right, let's get these guys out of the way. We'll get into articulation. The articulation is also super fantastic with this guy overall. Um, his head is on a ball ball joint, so he can go bobble all the way around. I'll get a nice, really shiny, glossy silver paint. You can get his head all the way around. Um, it's actually on another hinge here too. So you can see he can actually look up quite a bit and look back, look not, not that much down. Um, I wish there was rotation at this Shoulder joint here, he doesn't have that. And again, that shoulder joint that we showed before is pretty much blocked by this um, purple panel. But he still has both. If you lift this flap up, going out to the side like this, bicep rotation. And apparently this is also accurate um, to the um, animation. 90 degree elbow bend. His fists rotate, all molded one piece. And then because of that transformation joint, you can get a little bit of that tilt in. Uh, I actually like it when you get a little bit of tilt in. So it's a nice added bonus when they do the transformation joint that way. He does have a waist, which can rotate 360. No ab crunch or anything like that. I think that's a, a lot to ask of a main line. Even a $55 uh, leader class. Legs go up here. Can't go back much, unfortunately, because there's no butt, bat fl uh, butt flap. Here, so he can't really go back at all. That's the only bummer for his his um, articulation. Thighs can go out this far. He has a hidden um, thigh swivel, which is great. A nice deep knee bend for such a boxy figure. 
single jointed. And then coming down to his feet, his feet are my favorite part of this figure. So he has an ankle tilt, which is pretty nicely frictioned on both. Uh, but the things I like about him the most are that his heel and toes are actually uh, kind of ratcheted. So you can hear that. And usually I'm like, you don't need that much heel articulation. And again, remember to unlock this if you're going to use the toe. But the heel articulation actually really helps out with certain poses like walking poses or dynamic poses. So when he's bending forward like this, um, you know, one, one foot might be off the ground. The heel might be off the ground as far as realistically. But using that um, ratcheted joint, you can see here that it makes it way more stable, and from the front, you can't tell. So that's really well done. I, I hope they do more ratcheted um, heels and toes like that um, moving forward because I think that's just really, really nicely done. It makes posing this guy rock solid. And again, much, much more fun to pose him. You don't have them just like flipping, uh, falling down, flopping over, and just a little detail in these... Um, Ratchet to heels really helps a lot. I enjoy this figure immensely. He's super fun. All right. The only other thing we talk about with accessories is that this becomes a hand with an extra thumb. Um, these are, and I'm going to try to remember how it goes because these are not, um, again, they're not uh, universal. And there's actually slots here that I got to get this. Okay. I think this is on this side. So you'll use the fist rotated out like so, and then you'll peg it into this peg here. And you'll see that there's a little cutout here and here. And that first cutout um, corresponds to this panel, this gray panel, here, not gray panel, this tan panel here. And it's just kind of annoying to get this pegged in because you have to, you can't really see what's going on. All right, I think I got that. Make sure that it goes in the slot. Oh, I'm wondering. Maybe I did it wrong. Maybe I was supposed to flip it the other way. Okay, yeah, I think that worked a little bit better. But yeah, and then the, this little um, tab thing kind of goes over his forearm. This little ridge here. And that locks it more securely into place. So you have this and you can get two of them and make him do really dumb poses like this. I don't know why they felt the need to do this, but there you go. If you need a super pop-eyed blitzwing with an extra thumb, uh, <laughs> there you go. If this was your dream when you were a kid collecting G1 blitzwing and you were like, I need this. I need this in my life. Um, there you go. I'm not even going to bother doing both. All right, so give me a second here. Uh, I'm going to take a look at the... I'm going to look at the Q&A section, see if there are any questions. I always try to take a quick pause here. And then I'll look at uh, some of the comments before we do reverse transformation. So let's see. Uh, the poll. Where's the poll? Oh, sorry, I'm trying to look for the Q&A, sorry. Questions? Let's see here. Come on. The interface for these is really annoying. All right, McLeary Tier G says, if you could snap your fingers and blink one triple changer tra transformer out of existence, what would it be and why did you choose, um, and why did you, I choose Legacy Blitzwing? Um, I would not choose Legacy Bl Blitzwing. I think Blitzwing might be my favorite triple changer. Um, yeah, I would say definitely of, like, the G1 when it comes to, like, the big ones, like Astro Train, Blitzwing, um, Springer. He's probably my favorite. He's just cool. And even the various versions of him, like in Animated, they always do kind of a fun job with him. Um, yeah, he's my favorite. The one I would blink out of existence. Oh, that's a hard one. Sandstorm, I guess. Sandstorm never really connected to me. He always just looked like the Oscar Mayer Wiener mobile, so... Uh, Ridiculous Badger doing his version or this or that every time we do Q&A, he asks, 
coffee or tea um uh i don't drink coffee even though i do enjoy it um mostly for caffeine reasons so i drink tea occasionally um iced tea but again even, i i basically have no caffeine in my in my diet for the most part so i'll put i'll go with tea uh let's see what is this oh frankie lawless says i'm mostly a uh, third party uh, what's, what is the lore with the main line? Um, I'm with you, right? I do most masterpiece, uh, most masterpiece and um, third party, but and there isn't a whole a lot of allure to me. But then again, once I got a couple of these in hand, especially like Leo Prime, Blitzwing, um, they're really much better engineered and designed than we have been expecting. Again, yes, they are smaller, but I feel like the things that they're adding lately, like the um, blast effects that some a lot of them have, the ankle tilts and so forth, the unified scale has really helped out with the playability. Um, and the fact that they are relatively cheap, you can get a lot more for your buck and the scale. And I think this is also one of the things that you can really enjoy with your kids uh, as, as opposed to like MPs or third party. You can't really enjoy those with your kids too much depending on what ages they are. Um, just because again, they're high end, higher end collectibles and so forth. So, uh, I think it is definitely something you should check out is maybe one or two characters. And these are just really fun. Like I said, I just got him this week and he's the, um, death spot that I've been playing with constantly transforming back and forth, uh, just because he is a lot of fun. All right. And, uh, Princeton said, how deep you, are you going to go into the main line and will you keep them all or sell them off? Um, I don't know. It's going to be by feel. I'm, I'm not going to make a, a, a big decision on this. I do have actually have a lot of main line stuff that I've collected over the years that I've just never opened just because I was interested in them. Um, even like the studio series, they'll have a lot of studio series. So I'll, I'll do main line Monday, probably not every Monday, but I'm going to try to do it you know, at least once a month, if not more. And it really depends. All right, so looking at some of the comments, uh, Mariona just said, very happy with this Blitzwing. Only downside is the weird fist guns. Yeah, I mean, the only good use of this was for um, the tank mode. And even then, not really necessary. Uh, I would have. I think they realized that this would be hard to sell as a leader as is, even though he does have that complex engineering and a lot of plastic, a lot of moving parts, just because they did make him scale with the le the the leaders of each one, the the uh, Megatrons and Optimuses. Um, so selling this guy at a leader class price when he's only this big as a Voyager, um, they probably were like, we got to throw some extra stuff in. I don't know what else they really could have thrown in. Um, I think one of the things that they could do, again, if you remember the one chug Blitzwing, um, they had like the triple changing face, which was kind of like an homage to um, animated and so forth. It would be nice if maybe they started giving you some extra faces or extra heads that you can easily pop on and pop off, kind of like Marvel Legends and stuff like that. Uh, I think that'd be cool. I would prefer that over, you know, something like this, right? All right. I think those are it for the questions that we had before. Uh, let me just scroll back and see some of the other chats. Yeah, Primax also likes the blast effects and Siege. Love that they're universal. That you can it makes you have more playability, right? <laughs> you know what they say about bots with big hands, says Fanlinx. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Transformer animated uh, Blitzwing looks good, but weird hips. Yeah. Uh. You like broadside over sandstorm? Uh I don't know. I mean, you're starting you're starting to get into the more obscure triple changers. I was trying to at least get some of the more main ones. I feel like broadside is not one of the main ones that you think of. All right, let's see what else we got here. Uh Marion also said I got the wheelie upgrade kick for studio series. 86 wheelie to fold the hands and give him a butt lift and some leg fillers, but it was $19. But, uh, I mean, it's okay. All right. All right, so I'm not going to go through all of that. Oh, Octane. Uh, I like Octane. I, I've always liked Octane a bit. And again, 
I'm talking about characters that had more significant stories, like at least one episode that was kind of around them. Yeah, Slow DK, if you've seen this guy, I definitely would recommend it. It'd be nice if you can get him on sale, of course, but he is still relatively new. Alright, so let's go ahead and get this guy transformed back. So we're going to go back into jet mode and then into tank mode and finish off the review. We're not going to show all the accessories this time. Um, but again, he's super fun to transform. Hopefully you guys can see that, that they did a really good job with engineering. Not a lot of waffles or anything like that. So let's go ahead and get him transformed back. Um, uh, the first thing we'll do is just deal with the legs. We'll just undo the toes with these wing tip thingies. Fold these in. We're going to come to the back, open up the tabs, and unfold these. We're going to collapse these in or according them in, however you want to describe it. Uh, the first couple times, some of these tabs are a little tight, so just be careful on that. Just make sure that they're kind of aligned correctly when you collapse them down. Same thing on this side here. Like so. We can flip these tip thingies whenever we want, but it helps with hip alignment, so might as well do those now. Uh, let's go to the chest, untab the chest, lift this up. This entire section is going to come up and back. Uh, get this in like so. Uh, but the before we do that, make sure we get the arms in. So flip this filler piece around, rotate this 180, get the fist in, and then fold this around to go into that gap in the shoulder. So same thing on this side, rotate this around like so, rotate this like so, and get the fist in. And then we're gonna untab these at the shoulders. Get these rotated all the way down here, let me flip this up out of the way. Remember the tabbing at the hips, so make sure that the hips are straight before you start tabbing them in. Now this whole section will come back down. Tab in here. And here. And then here. And here. Fold these in. Before we plug this in, we want to lift up this panel here, rotate the head forward, close this up, open up the bottom here to release the nose cone, close that up, and tab that in. You can say, you can wave high to Blitzwing's head as you close that up. And again, if you want, you can rotate it the other way to hide it. Uh, these, I, I think they look better when they're, I think they're supposed to be angled out a little bit. So you can do that or you can keep them straight, whatever floats your boat there. I didn't really talk much about that. But there he is in jet mode, the weakest of the three, but still def definitely passable. And then we'll go into tank mode. So let's untab this. Untab this. Get the shoulders untabbed and rock forward. That's basically the only thing that you really need to do kind of in reverse. Uh, we'll go ahead and lift this panel up. Get this down. Um, again, for me, I like rotating the head. You don't have to do this, but I like having the head rotated so you don't see the face when you close this back up. Oh, before we tab that in, I forgot, sorry. Before we tab that in, we need to get these leg panels wrapped around. So split the legs, get these rotated around. Again, make sure you push this tab in and, and push this tightly. Get the two halves of the legs back together. Come back down. They'll tab in here and here again. We'll flip these up. And then these we need to untab here at this joint. So just pull that down. Rotate it 180 degrees on that. There's a tab here that will tab in there. And then there's a hooking tab on the fist, um, backside of the fist. 
get this flap down, untab this tread, front tread, from the back tread, get that around this little lip here, and you're, you're good on that side. Same thing on this side. Oh, I untapped something here. Come on. Get back in your hole. You do good for your home. All right, untab this. Tab this in. There. Back here. Open this bin. Untab the front tread. Have it come all the way around here like so. Now we can tab in the front. This turret will rock forward and tab in. Open up this section. Get the turret barrel out. Rotate 180. And there we are. We are back in tank mode where we started. And again, looks great. Super fun figure. The transformation itself is probably worth the, the asking price. I thought it was really well engineered. Um, not a lot of complaints. Very accurate, I would say, in all modes. Uh, robot mode especially is really great with the articulation. Those heels, mwah, chef's kiss to that. I hope they do more of that. Um, but yeah, I'm happy with all three modes. The robot mode, the tank mode, and then the jet mode are probably my order of preference. But... I, like I said, usually you have a really, really weak third mode, one of three modes. I don't even think the jet is all that weak. I think it's pretty accurate. Um, let's see here. Do we have any other questions? I'm going to close out the poll. So I asked, is this the best trip, uh, mainline triple changer to date? And ending the poll here. Uh, we're exactly 50-50 out of 40 votes. Half of you guys said yes, and half of you guys said no. However, I think that's a testament to this, right? Because I basically said, is this, this one figure better than all the other triple changers that we've gotten to date? And half of you agree that this single figure is better than, than the rest. So the half of you who are here are probably split, split between several other figures, um, triple changers somewhere down the line, the various... Um, iterations of triple changes that we've had years before but the fact that half of you guys think that this might be the best mainline triple changer to date um is a testament so yeah i will count that as a win for sure oh later tm thanks for stopping by oh yeah yeah oh yeah this that's a good example you know you can raise this up maybe they did do it that way so you, you can recreate the recreate the scene from the movie i have a cup give me a second I don't have a, a recent cup. This is my cup, my old cup. But yeah, you could definitely recreate the scene from the movie. I'm sure you guys have like the, the better um, 86 movie cup. Again, I don't have that one. But again, you could definitely recreate that scene. Very nice call, Mariana. Let's see here. Oh, yeah, G1 Astro's train. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Wow, you guys think that first G1 Astro's Train was the best triple changer? Mm, I mean, giving it the benefit of the doubt of being such an old figure, I can definitely see that. <laughs> but yeah, I guess the, 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 as people are saying, the downside is the robot mode looks really weak. All right, let's see here. Showing his spoiled youth. Yeah. All right. So let's see. Is there anything else that we have for Q&A? And let me ask, see if any others came in before we sign off. Nope. Nothing else. So we're done with the review for today. Hopefully this guy's, this uh, uh, review helped you guys realize how good this triple changer is and how good the main line is i've definitely ignored it for a long time basically the last time i was really collecting these on the regular were for 
maybe the Combine Wars slash um, Titan Masters. And back then, they were kind of cool just because the Titan Master gimmick, but the quality and overall engineering that we're seeing as of late is really impressive. So if you guys have quit mainline, definitely give it a shot again. I'll be that's what I'm doing. I'll be back with some other reviews. Um, even even in the Kingdom stuff, I got this um, Air Razor Kingdom Air Razor for ten dollars at Ross. I just saw it by happenstance, and I think they're basically re they're using the same one for the movie Air Razor. I think T-Man said that they're oversizing it, maybe. But this figure is also really great. So I've been not really collecting for a long time the main line, and I'm kind of regretting it. So I might go back and try to collect a couple of them. I don't know exactly how many I'll keep. I think they'll just be depending on the character I like and the look. But I'm very happy with them with the direction the main line is going, aside from the price going up. But it was kind of funny. I I um was watching an old review, and I forget which character it was or which which reviewer it was, but it was, oh, oh it was, I was watching a review for this figure, which I also found, um, the reason I brought this out is because I, I just got a Planet X uh, Shockwave, or it should be coming tomorrow, and I wanted, and I found this, and I wanted to just show in comparison, but I was watching this, and this is a, a quite an old figure from um, back in the day, and even then, there were com there, the reviewers was saying that people are complaining about the price going up of the different scales and the size going down. Um, and so that this figure is what? God, I don't even know. It's got to be like 15 years, 10, 15 years old now. I don't even know exactly. But they were complaining about it then. It's a never-ending story. You know, things are going to get more expensive. Things are probably going to get smaller. Um, that's just the, the way it is with with figures nowadays. But but yeah, uh, other than the price of being fifty five dollars, it's hard for me even with that not to recommend. He's super fun, and he's been one of the most fun figures that I've collected in a while, regardless of line. So uh, highly recommend it. If you guys are catching this on the rewind, please let me know if I've forgotten anything or did anything wrong, and I'll go ahead and send a correction out. If you want to leave a comment on whether you think this is the best mainline triple changer to date. Let me know in the comments below or let me know which one, which uh, triple changer you think is better. Lastly, uh, if, if what I'm doing really does help you out or excite you, the live streams really make me really, I think, one of the differentiators out there in reviewers. You can always interact with me on the live streams. But if you like that, give it a thumbs up, share, and subscribe. Also, as usual, I'm going to be plugging my Discord. It's become it's growing a lot, and there's a lot of fun uh, conversations going on there. Very chill. But the Discord link is in the description below as well. Um, but yeah, hopefully, everyone, you enjoyed it. Hope you guys had a great President's Day and our second Mainline Monday. We'll keep it going. Thanks a lot for life as it happens.